Hello readers, welcome back to Nutan's library. Friends, I've come up with a summary of another amazing book that's helped millions of readers already. The title is How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's a great self-help book written by Dale Carnegie. The book offers practical advice on how to build relationships and achieve success in both personal and professional settings. It covers topics such as communication skills, handling criticism, and making people like you. The author emphasizes the importance of genuine interest in others, positive self-expression, and avoiding negative attitudes and behaviors. The principles outlined in the book have been widely adopted and continue to be popular in modern times. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then immediately like the video and subscribe to the channel. So friends, we'll learn various insights and strategies from the book in four parts. You'll see that they are of immense help in maximizing your influence and transforming your relationships. Part 1. It deals with fundamental techniques in handling people. So first technique is don't criticize, condemn or complain. Friends, we should make it a habit not to condemn people. They are just what we would be under similar circumstances. So let's try to understand them. We should take time to figure out why they do what they do. That's a lot more profitable and intriguing than criticism. It breeds sympathy, tolerance and kindness. To know all is to forgive all. Criticism is dangerous because it wounds a person's precious pride hurts his sense of importance and arouses resentment. Always remember, an animal rewarded for good behavior will learn much more rapidly and retain what it learns far more effectively than an animal punished for bad behavior. You see, any fool can criticize, condemn and complain, but it takes character and self-control to be understanding and forgiving. Second Technique Give honest and sincere appreciation. Friends, the deepest urge in human nature is the desire to be important. All the human beings we deal with are hungry for appreciation. They crave it actually. It is the legal tender that all souls enjoy. So keep appreciating the people around you. But never confuse appreciation with cheap flattery. Flattery is shallow and insincere unlike appreciation. One comes from the heart out, the other comes from the teeth out. One is unselfish, the other selfish. One is universally admired, the other universally condemned. Always remember, flattery fails, appreciation works. So be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. Honest appreciation gets results where criticism and ridicule fails. Third technique, arouse in the other person an eager want. You see, self-expression is the dominant necessity of human nature. If you want a person to do what you want him to do, then make him want to do it. Arouse a desire in him because action springs out of what we fundamentally desire. Forget about your own accomplishments, your desires, your wants. Figure out what the other person wants and how he could get it. Always try to think from other people's point of view. See things from their angle. Friends, the world is full of people who are grabbing and self-seeking. The rare individual who unselfishly tries to serve others has an enormous advantage. Part 2 it deals with the ways to make people like you. So what are those ways? The first thing you can do is become genuinely interested in other people. This way you'll develop real friendships and you'll be able to help others at the same time as you help yourself. Number two, smile. There is a Chinese proverb, a man without a smiling face must not open a shop. Friends. Your smile is a messenger of goodwill. Your smile brightens the lives of all who see it. So give the people a good time meeting you. Remember, there is far more information in a smile than a frown. 
Number three, approach the situation with the name of the individual. Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. There is a pride associated with one's name and one strives to perpetuate the name at any cost. Number four, be a good listener. Encourage others to talk about themselves and their accomplishments. Remember that the people you are talking to are a hundred times more interested in themselves and their wants and problems than they are in you and your problems. If you aspire to be a good conversationalist, be an attentive listener. Number five, talk in terms of the other person's interests. The royal road to a person's heart is to talk about the things he or she treasures most. Number six, make the other person feel important and do it sincerely. Talk to people about themselves and they will listen for hours. Part three, it tells you how to win people to your way of thinking. So how can you do that? Number one, the only way to get the best of an argument is to avoid it. You can't win an argument. Always welcome the disagreement. Control your temper. Think through the problem. Be honest and look for areas of agreement. I'll quote what Buddha said. Hatred is never ended by hatred but by love. And a misunderstanding is never ended by an argument but by tact, diplomacy, conciliation and a sympathetic desire to see the other person's viewpoint. Number two, show respect for the other person's opinions. Never say you are wrong. Nothing good is accomplished and a lot of damage can be done if you tell a person straight out that he or she is wrong. Few people like to listen to truths that reflect on their judgment. Lord Chesterfield said, be wiser than other people if you can, but do not tell them so. Number three, if you are wrong, admit it quickly and emphatically. When we are right, let's try to win people gently and tactfully to our way of thinking. And when we are wrong, let's admit our mistakes quickly and with enthusiasm. Number four, begin in a friendly way because gentleness and friendliness are always stronger than fury and force. You see, people don't want to change their minds, no matter how much wrong they think. They can't be forced or driven to agree with you or me, but they may possibly be led to if we are gentle and friendly. Abraham Lincoln rightly said, a drop of honey catches more flies than a gallon of gall. Number five, get the other person saying yes immediately. Don't begin by discussing the things on which you differ. Begin by emphasizing and keep on emphasizing the things on which you agree. In the beginning, try to get a number of yes responses. This sets the psychological process of the listeners moving in the affirmative directions. No withdrawal activities take place. The listener is in a forward moving, accepting and open attitude. On the contrary, when a person says no and really means it, then there is a physical withdrawal or readiness for withdrawal. The whole neuromuscular system sets itself on guard against acceptance. Number six, let the other person do a great deal of the talking. Listen patiently and with an open mind. Be sincere about it. Encourage them to express their ideas fully. A French philosopher said, if you want enemies, excel your friends. But if you want friends, let your friends excel you. Number seven, let the other person feel that the idea is his or hers. The reason why rivers and seas receive the homage of a hundred mountain streams is that they keep below them. Number eight, try honestly to see things from the other person's point of view. This is a formula that will work wonders for you. You see, other people may be totally wrong but they don't think so. Don't condemn them. Any fool can do that. Try to understand them. 
Only wise, tolerant, exceptional people try to do that. Try honestly to put yourself in the other person's place. There is a reason why the other man thinks and acts as he does. Find out that reason and you'll have the key to his actions, perhaps to his personality. This way, you'll sharply increase your skill in human relationships. Number 9. Be sympathetic with the other person's ideas and desires. Three-fourths of the people you'll ever meet are hungering and thirsting for sympathy. Give it to them and they will love you. Number 10. Appeal to the nobler motives. People are usually honest and want to discharge their obligations. The exceptions to this are few. People will react favorably if you make them feel that you consider them honest, upright and fair. Number 11. Dramatize your ideas. Bring a little dramatization, showmanship in the way you present your ideas. This will captivate the attention of your listeners. This idea works almost with people of all ages, children, adolescents and adults. Number 12. Throw down a challenge. That is what every successful person loves, the game, the chance for self-expression, the chance to prove his or her worth, to excel, to win. So the way to get things done is to stimulate competition. Part 4. It tells you how to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. So how can you do that? Number 1. Begin with praise and honest appreciation. Number 2. Call attention to people's mistakes indirectly. Begin your criticism with sincere praise followed by the word but and end with a critical statement. This indirect criticism works wonders with sensitive people who may resent bitterly any direct criticism. Number 3. Talk about your own mistakes before criticizing the other person. When you admit your own mistakes first, it can help convince somebody to change his behavior. Number 4. Ask questions instead of giving direct orders. For example, instead of saying do this or do that or don't do this or don't do that, you can say you might consider this or do you think that would work? Number 5. Let the other person save face. Hurting a man in his dignity is a crime. We should not say anything that diminishes a man in his own eyes. Number 6. Praise the slightest improvement and praise every improvement. Be hearty in your approbation and lavish in your praise. When criticism is minimized and praise emphasized, the good things people do will be reinforced and the poorer things will lessen. Remember, abilities wither under criticism. They blossom under encouragement. So praise people and inspire them with a realization of their hidden possibilities. Number 7. Give the other person a fine reputation to live up to. Assume a virtue and state openly that other people have the virtue you want them to develop. When you give the people a fine reputation to live up to, it's highly likely that they will make sincere efforts to live up to that. Number 8. If you want to help others to improve, use encouragement. Make the fault seem easy to correct. Praise the other person for what he did right. Minimize the errors. Number 9. Make the other person happy about doing the thing you suggest. Be sincere. Know exactly what it is you want the other person to do. Be empathetic. Ask yourself what is it that the other person really wants. Consider the benefits that person will receive from doing what you suggest. When you make your request, put it in a form that will convey to the other person the idea that he personally will benefit. This way, people are more likely to do what you would like them to do. So friends, how to win friends and influence people is a seminal work that provides practical and actionable advice on how to improve one's interpersonal skills. 
Its timeless message continues to inspire and guide people in their personal and professional lives, making it a must-read for anyone looking to improve their interpersonal skills and succeed in life. The insights and strategies presented in the book have stood the test of time and remain relevant even in today's fast-paced, technology-driven world, making it a valuable resource for anyone looking to build better relationships and influence those around them. Millions have already been benefited. Now it's your turn.